Hello, everyone. We are back with episode six of Movie Talk with Carter and Ewan. And today we are joined by our first guest. You can introduce yourself. How's it going, everyone? My name is Brandon, aka the Brando Critic. I can just copy and paste what I say before every single video. But basically, I have my own YouTube channel where I talk about movies. And, you know, now I'm starting to do reactions to TV shows and I'm doing watch alongs. And yeah, I've done I've been a film fan for as long as I can remember. I have gone to four years of film school and yeah, I guess I could say I'm, a, I'm an obsessive. <laughs> Where'd you go to film school? Capilano University, North Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. Four <laughs> okay. years of my life down there and uh, learned a lot. It was a great experience. Was it worth it, you say? I would I would think so. Like you learn so much and it's a lot of hands-on stuff too. So it's not just like, okay, well... There is a lot of you know textbook things like okay let's look like look at a movie oh in this shot the Coen brothers moved the camera this way but then again it's a lot of it like for the second semester is all right so now here's your scripts here's the money the film's due in April go and a lot of it is like you gotta you know just get going and so there's a lot of hands-on learning experience there too. Oh, that's, that's for my cool. uh, for my career class we had to choose a university to like apply to. Once we graduate, and I chose Capilano University too. Oh, nice! So, uh, yeah, yeah. You'd be thinking about coming out to Vancouver? Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I'm from BC, so it'd be. It'd oh, be nice. Fun. We're just in this episode. We're basically just going to focus on our top three Pixar films. And if you haven't watched any of our other episodes, I suggest watching them. We kind of have this style that we go through. And starting off, Carter, you can start off with your number three. Okay, so my first pick is Cars. I know it's not really the best Pixar film, like it's not top tier at all, but I just find it to be really harmless, cute, and fun, and it's just, like it's a really wholesome movie, and it still holds up today, so I think it definitely deserves a spot. Are you like a car expert? Like, do you like enjoy like looking at cars and like working on it? Like, are you like a hands-on car dude? No, not at all. Just, I like Mater, so... Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. my right. extent of cars. Yeah. yeah. The only reason why I, I asked that is because my one of my buddies, he cars is like his favorite movie of all time. But that's because, you know, he will buy a new car every three years and tinker with it. And like he's a car enthusiast. So I always like to try to see the uh comparisons there. Yeah. yeah no, just... I I have a friend and like he just like instantly went and watched four V Ferrari. Art of Racing in the Rain, I think that's what that one was called last year. He was just like, all that's what he wanted to watch was just all the car movies. And I'm interested to see if he really likes cars. But I like cars. It's like one that I haven't seen it in a while, but I watched it all the time as a kid. It was like my best friend's favorite Pixar film. So I've seen it quite a lot. And I really do enjoy a lot of it. I love Mater in this one, not definitely not in Cars 2. But I love the dynamic and just it's a really fun film. It, as you said, it's not top tier Pixar, but it's one that's fun every single time you watch it. I, I've never even seen Cars 2. Oh, don't watch it. <laughs> I'm, I'm going I'm, I'm going into this uh, conversation about Pixar movies unarmed. I haven't seen every single movie, but Me neither. I haven't seen Coco. That's the only one I haven't seen. Uh, OK, gotcha. I like Coco a lot. It'll make you want to buy a ticket to Mexico for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. OK cars interesting mm -hmm. well um you know it's funny like for me whenever i think of a movie from my childhood and cars came out when i was about 11 right so with me like cars would always remind me of road trips you know and i would always drive up to the okanagan and um we we had uh my mom and dad had a dodge caravan 2004 with the tv you know like the dvd screen in it yeah, which was we have those. as a kid that was that's the coolest thing in the world right so yeah of course what's the movie that we watched when we were driving up you know on a road trip well you got to watch cars right so it's it's a movie that i haven't seen in quite a quite a long time but i always remember you know i'm sure if you go back and i watch it with my you know critic brain uh you know it might not be top tier like you guys said but you know, as a kid, and especially for someone who loves cars, and, you know, I'm sure that, you know, like, when I think about cars, I think about all the toys and Cars Land, like, from a marketing standpoint, that was a great decision, right? Oh, you know, totally. take Hot Wheels, slap a face on there, and boom, you got money making, uh, a money making monster. Um, but yeah, like, I always remembered Mater, like, always, um, always making me laugh. And then, of course, I don't know if you can hear my dog in the background, but... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But um, yeah, so I always remembered Mater and, 
you know, it's always like, I always remember the story, you know, trying to, uh, you know, not always go for the big city life, but always, you know, taking everything for, don't take anything for granted. Basically like that was the, the, the theme of it. And I guess that's why I like Pixar also, you know, that all the movies from what I know, I, again, I haven't seen cars too, but <laughs> they always have like the really good messages. And I remember, I remember the message in cars being pretty, uh, pretty good at least, or pretty, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It has staying power. If I can remember it nowadays, you know, it worked back then. Yeah, I, we have one of those cars where it has the screen, and that's where I watched Toy Story 3 like a million times. And I still right. have the image of the, the monkey that like claps his hands together. And right. it's like the image of it on that screen. And like whenever I think of Toy Story 3, I think of that. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and Cars is it's a fun movie. It's enjoyable. It's definitely the best of the three. Two just sucks. And three, I don't even think I've seen the whole thing, but yeah, the first one is. The first one is very good. Yeah. yeah, I definitely have not seen the whole thing of Cars 3, but uh, there's a story right at the end of this. I'll tell you guys. It's a, it's a doozy. <laughs> okay, so I was kind of tossing back and forth Monsters, Inc. and Finding Nemo. And I watched Finding Nemo again last night for the first time in ages. And I never, I always knew how intense that movie was, but there's some pretty intense moments. And I'm sure, I don't think it's a spoiler. It's like the first scene in the movie right yeah. where um that giant fish you know basically <laughs> eats marlin's wife and then eats all the children except for one that is a yeah. pretty dark way to start a movie and i think like i can use this statement for all the films i'm going to choose but they're adult stories but they're kid friendly right where like you know i when i see people going to the movie theater and i see people walking into a kid's movie and i see the parents just look completely depressed it's like they're walking <laughs> into a funeral home Whereas Pixar movies, like even my family, even my dad, who's not the biggest fan of animation or whatever, you know, he's still excited to see a Pixar movie because he knows that there's going to be enough in it for adults as well as kids. And Finding Nemo is definitely about that as well. You know, like the main character, I guess, with the biggest arc would be the father, not Nemo himself. And of course, all these characters go through arcs, but the main storyline is the dad being o too overprotective of his kid. And it's, it's quite mature for a... You know, you could have just made, you know, I, th I think of Shark Tale. It's like, oh, yes. like what's trying to be like the hip thing? Like, I guess kids like fish, right? You know, Finding Nemo's a big hit. And of course, people like Will Smith. So let's make this really sick movie, guys. And but uh, I always thought that Finding Nemo and again, all the other films I'm going to list definitely, you know, harken down to, you know, what's the message of the movie? And it went more for the adult route. And then, of course, you know, it's hilarious. The animation is beautiful. Ellen DeGeneres, um, <laughs> uh, what's, um, it's not Garth Brooks, not Mel Brooks. Albert it's, Brooks. Albert, Albert Brooks. Brooks. There it is. <laughs> One of the Brooks, you know, all the whole cast is great. Willem Dafoe as well. Yes. You know, every yeah. character has, you know, and every character is memorable too, you know, and like today, like me and my sister, were still quoting it. Shark bait. Hoo ha ha. So, <laughs> oh my yeah. God. He touched the butt. Yeah. yeah he touched the yeah. butt. You know, like those, those lines Again, that movie came out when I was about eight years old, and those lines are still with me today. Like, you know, and some of like, who who keeps singing like, just keep swimming, just keep swimming. It yeah. it sticks with you forever. Yeah, that um, Finding Nemo is actually higher on my list, but uh, I've seen this film probably the most of like the past five years when it comes to a Pixar film. I'll talk more about it a bit later, but I've seen this film probably four or five times um, since. I don't even know since like five in like five years or something. And I love it every time. And a lot of that is that it, it deals with a lot of darker themes and that's, what's so great about Pixar. As you mentioned that when you watch this at different times in your life, you catch on to more things. Like as a kid, you're like, Oh my God, um, this is like really, this is really funny. Or like Dory is cute and hilarious. And then, as you get older, you kind of catch on to the more deeper themes of, as you mentioned, Marlin and losing his kid for a while and then the regret he goes through. And that's what's so great about Finding Nemo is that it's not just for kids, as you mentioned. Like, there are some Pixar films, like, I, I'd say A Bug's Life, which is when I, like, I used to love that film as a kid. Now, I just don't really like it that much. It's fine, but it is. Like it drinking doesn't... lukewarm water. Yeah, it's, exactly. You'd so, rather drink something else, but it's not 
bad for you. <laughs> yeah, like no. I, I rewatched it like a week or two ago, and I was just like, "Why did I love this?" And but then I watch Finding Nemo, I'm like, "This is just fantastic." Mm-hmm. Yeah. Gotcha. I think for me personally, like in all of Pixar's filmography, that Finding Nemo was like the first one to be really like beautifully animated. I think, like, um, like the earliest film in their resume to be just so just like beautifully animated and uh again it deals with such mature themes that i think pixar handles really well um it has such a big rewatchability factor as well and i think again that's just what makes pixar great right i just i just noticed your shirts um woody and buzz i i don't know how <laughs> yeah. i didn't notice that before but yeah that wasn't even yeah. planned either but yeah <laughs> Yeah, I wish I had any uh, some Pixar related T-shirts, but you know, it's funny. It's funny that we're filming this on this day because due to this whole, you know, quarantine thing, I had to cancel my trip to Disneyland. Today would have been the first day in the park. Really? For me. Wow. Yeah, my flight was yes. My flight officially was yesterday, of course, yeah. um, but it got postponed because Disney doesn't give refunds. Wink. So. Yeah, we had we had plans to go over March break and we were going to go to one of the Disney parks. And then that was like right when all the um, coronavirus stuff and quarantine was just starting. So mm-hmm. it's like, well, yeah, you know, yeah, too bad. But last thing about finding Nemo I'll say is that, you know, as well as the, like the more mature themes that it's quite intense, you know, the, the shark, uh, the shark chase, the jellyfish scene, uh, the climax, you know, um, Darla, I, that's her name, right? Yeah. You know, the, she's a fish killer. And, you know, of course, Nemo trying to escape and uh, in the water filter. Like, all of it is, like, it's pretty intense stuff, especially for a kid's film. Like, there's some action scenes that don't have as much weight, you know, in, like, the most hardcore R-rated action films. Whereas, <laughs> yes. uh, you know, a Pixar animated movie, because, you know, character and story and emotion, if you have all those three, then your action scenes are going to be a lot more intense and a lot more gripping. I agree. And just like kind of side note here, this episode is definitely going to be over half an hour. I know most of them aren't, but who cares? So my number three is actually, this could go in the unpopular opinion. It's my favorite of the Toy Story films, and that is Toy Story 2. Um, Over the time, I remember like two years ago at an an Easter dinner at my uh, grandma's, grandma's house, Um, Toy Story was playing on the TV and I kind of just sat down and I just watched it. I was like, this is really good. And since I've seen that was before Toy Story 4 came out and then on the car ride home, it was like four hours. So I watched two and three and there's just been something about two that has always stuck out to me. Like, I just always love it. I love the introduction to Jesse. I love Emperor Zerg. And then the whole thing about um, Al's toy barn is amazing. And I feel like it dives deeper into themes like I love the first one and for like ever the first this one and uh, the first one kind of were battling for the spot but then like over time the third one kind of just passed the first one a bit but this is my favorite of them and it's been really hard for me to choose and I feel like this is I don't really want to say underrated because none of the Pixar films really are underrated but this was always lower on people's lists and I don't really understand why. Yeah, it's Interesting. definitely overlooked a lot. Yeah, because I'm I'm thinking, you know what? Toy Story 2 is one of my earliest memories. And speaking about intense scenes, the climax of that scene in the airport when they're jumping between all the luggage yeah. things, I, I don't... I say that my first film in a theater was Dinosaur when I was five in 2000. <laughs> but I, I do remember seeing that scene on a very big screen and being extremely scared. And again, I was four years old when that film came out. So maybe in some kind of weird Mandela effect memory, that might have been my first movie ever. And, you know, like I, I always say that, you know, Toy Story 2 might be in my film school brain. That might be my favorite one, too. But, you know, we'll get to my list later on. But, yeah, you know, and like you said, you know, Jesse and the rest of Woody's gang, they're such a great group of characters to be added in. And they become like such staples in the franchise later on. They're not just, oh, they're the ones that are in the second one. Right. They become yeah. part of the Toy Story family, which I really do yeah. enjoy. They don't feel like they're just added for a sequel. They feel like they actually like hold a place in the franchise. And um, I consider Toy Story 2 to be probably the most iconic of the franchise. 
and uh, definitely the most fun of the franchise too. Not what? my favorite. We'll get to that later, but <laughs> yeah. I'm just curious what you mean by iconic. I will. I just think like uh, Emperor Zerg, Alice Toy Barn, like all that stuff is when I think of Toy Story, like the franchise as a whole, right. like a lot of those scenes are the first thing that come to mind. And right. yeah. Gotcha. And it, was, and it is kind of fun to have Barbie in there and another Buzz Lightyear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Some nice little touches. Yeah. And also it has the most satisfying scene in all of cinema where Woody's getting fixed up by that guy and he's like painting over him, cleaning his eye. That, I just watch that and I'm like, wow, like that's a very big, like it still doesn't look as good as something like Finding Nemo, but it still looked quite a bit better than the first one in A Bug's Life, you know? Yeah. Gotcha. Most most satisfying scene ever? <laughs> one of them. <laughs> gotcha. One of them. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. And I, I, I love the... Um, you know, you see Woody's turmoil. It's like, okay, well, does he go with loyalty and go back to Andy? But then he knows that he has to face the inevitable that Andy will grow up and, you know, he can't play with him forever. Or do you, you know, do the selfish thing? But is that the selfish thing by staying in the museum and being loved by kids forever? You know, and I, I guess that's why I really love the Toy Story franchise is that it brings up those questions that sure, like as a kid, you, you might not be able to really process them. But as you grow older, like those questions still hit you hard. You know, when you're still driving back from the theater, yeah. you're still like, yeah, like it makes you films that make you rethink your entire life. You know, those are the powerful films that really stick with you. And Toy Story knows how to do that better than anyone. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, there. for sure. My number two. Okay. I consider my number two to probably be the most like emotionally deep film of all Pixar's resume. Uh, and that's Inside Out. I, uh, I think it has a lot of fun. It toys with a lot of good emotions. It has a great screenplay and a great voice cast. I mean, Bill Hader, Amy Poehler, Mindy Kaling. And it just takes so many, like, it explores so much. And I think it's so creative, ambitious, and refreshing. And it just, it holds up on rewatch, too. And, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I've seen I've seen Inside Out a lot since it came out because like in my family, I don't know, it just became like I remember seeing it in theaters and something that happens to one of the characters. I'm guessing a lot of people have seen Inside Out, but Bing Bong, um, <laughs> that character's death. That's like one of the most hard hitting um, deaths in probably all of Pixar's films. And this again, it isn't one of my absolute favorites. It's I think it's it's probably my top fifteen, just because I've seen it so many times over the from like twenty fifteen to like twenty seventeen. I probably watched it like twenty times because of my brothers, and it kind of got a bit repetitive. But I still think rewatching it. I don't know a bit ago. Um, it's really well made and something that it really hits you hard. The voice cast is amazing. Bill Hader, of course, of course, Bill Hader's a standout. I mean, that, and um, it, it really pulls at your emotions. And it is a movie about emotions. So, I mean, they, they pulled that off. Yeah, I was going to say, the, the movie that's emotionally deep is about a movie. <laughs> is a movie about emotions, oh, of emotions. course. Yeah. And I, I just think, like, you know, when you think of Pixar, like just the amount of cleverness. Oh, I'm just thinking about what's going on inside my daughter's head. And then this whole world comes with like these glass orbs that are memories and like just the idea and the premise alone. Like that's so captivating. You're like, oh, that's interesting. Like who could do it? But Pixar, right? Yeah. And you know, that movie came out, yeah, 2015, right? So I've only seen it once and I only saw it in the theater. And I guess that's just because, you know, like naturally I'm going to watch Monsters, Inc. and Finding Nemo and Incredibles because those are the films that came out when I was younger. But then, of course, like even still, Pixar was still able to have such an impact on me that even still, like now that I'm reaching like my, my mid 20s and that stuff or in those ages, I'm still like, well, I got to see the new Pixar movie. I got to see it opening day. Right. And Inside Out. Yeah, that was that's probably one of the best it really is um it might not be on my list but you know it's and again when you talk about bing bong like that is so that is so symbolic about all of us kind of growing up like we have to kind of say goodbye to our childhood innocence which is so sad right because that's something that we all kind of cling on to you know of course disney is a multi-billion dollar company because of it right so 
again that and that's a scene that in the theater like even i felt like oh god yep i yeah. heard Anyone so many at me? all right yeah it's it's a tough one but you know it's it's such a great ending too it's such a heartwarming uplifting ending as well yeah an emotional too. roller coaster satisfying that's a good word for it for sure yeah and it also sprouted a really really great meme of like what's going on inside their head and then turns into something crazy but yeah oh, i remember yeah. seeing it in in the theater and just hearing just <laughs> from like everyone around me and i'm like oh okay good i'm not the only one but it it's made me tear up like i didn't actually cry cuz like i don't normally in movies but it's one of the most emotionally powerful of the pixar films and there are a bunch but this is definitely one of the one of the most emotionally powerful yeah are they making an inside out too is there plans for one? I hope not. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Not that I know of, but yeah, I, I hope not. I haven't heard anything. There's like some Pixar films where, like, I always see something on Twitter. It's like, which Pixar film deserved a sequel? And then some of the options are like Wally or Ratatouille, and I'm like, these films are amazing, and mm-hmm. but but they're amazing as standalone movies. And that's what's like Inside Out is one of those two, like Wally Ratatouille that should be left alone because making a sequel, it made more sense for Inside Out because she would have got older, but whatever. But it still wouldn't, it might take away a bit of the message, a few of the messages from the first one, you know? That's always the, the question about going into a sequel. It's like, okay, well, this, can this be a rehash or can we move the story forward? And you know, I agree with you, but I'd also play devil's advocate here. It's like, I think maybe people were talk- were thinking the same thing when Toy Story 2 came out. Like, oh, this is such a great, great movie. We should just leave it alone. Like, what can they do with the with this story, right? But I think, you know, with the Toy Story franchise, it this has shown that, you know, you can make four sequels and it still be as heartwarming as ever. People can yeah. have different opinions about which one's the best. But, <laughs> you know, I think, you know, of course, when they, when they make a sequel there's always that possibility that it could like ruin the legacy. But also on the flip side of that, you know, with inside out, you know, she's, she's growing up. Right. I think that there's a lot of opportunity there for a lot of great, clever jokes and a lot of great, clever, you know, clever stories and characters and things like that. But again, we, we haven't seen the movie yet. So yeah, only time will tell. Well, with a premise like that, there's so much you can like explore off of. But I think just as a film itself, it's so contained. And I just, I mean, if any Pixar film that hasn't been made into a sequel, I think Inside Out would be a great one. But still, I think it should be left alone. If they do make a sequel, I'd be interested to know if they try to make another Bing Bong character. Because I feel like if they do, that'll be one bad aspect of the film, just because he was such an important character in the first. But like, you know how some sequels do that? maybe because it's pixar they won't but again we don't even know if we're getting a sequel but who knows it could take place 14 years or could happen 14 years later like incredible 2 but you never know yeah Yeah, you never know gotcha well good thing you uh mentioned the incredibles because my second (laughs) film is the incredibles and i guess depending on when you'd ask me incredibles might have been my number one Right. I remember watching that. I think it was the first movie I vividly remember going, oh, this opens this weekend. Right. And like actively waiting for a film to come out and saying, all right, The Incredibles is coming out. Like, I can't wait to see that. The the trailers look so cool. Like it's an action movie with superheroes. And, you know, I was nine years old. I was waiting for Spider-Man 2 to come out. And I was, you know, and yeah, something about that movie, like, again, especially with the intensity, the, uh, India four nine or nine or we got children aboard this plane. That type of intensity is almost too much for a regular action movie, right? And I just think that the character dynamic, especially with Bob Parr, like when I'm watching it as a kid, you're you're seeing it, and of course you're enjoying it because you're like, oh yeah, I want to be like Dash, I want to be like Violet, I want to be like you know. But then when I'm growing older, I'm definitely starting to see you know more of the deeper characters of. Um, trying to see the more of the psyche of Mr. Incredible, like, you know, his entire life has been like, he was the man, right? He was Mr. Incredible, but now he's just, he's this big dude confined in this office. He's taken orders and he's not allowed to help people. And it's just the midlife crisis. What's the best thing to do? Well, you got to go back to being a super again. And 
I think that The Incredibles has all that Disney magic, right? That intangible thing that you can't really describe, but it's just the, those butterflies that you that you feel when watching it. The Incredibles is it, right? And yeah, just a great score, great story, great laughs. Edna, like, come on, Edna. <laughs> yeah. Overall, great movie. It's actually, so. it, it's my number two as well. Um, this is one that I actually haven't watched. This is probably one of my most least watched Pixar films, but I really only have like two memories of actually seeing the film. And one of those was like when I rewatched it in, I think, January, and it was just cemented in my top three. I'm like, this and my number one have just stayed as my top two, just because The Incredibles is just such a well made superhero film this is easily one of the best we've ever got um the it wasn't the first time i watched it but the time i remember watching it last was maybe 2014 2013 in my best friend's basement before he moved and i remember just the image of jack jack near the end where syndrome had picks him up and then you see jack jack start to go crazy and then he like explodes into that beast and the weight and then I just remember laughing so hard at that and this film the whole third act just has some fantastic action and Syndrome as a villain is he's probably one of my favorites like I know some people don't actually love him as one of the top three but I feel like he has really interesting motives like you see he was rejected from he was rejected by Mr. Incredible as a kid so that he comes back Mm -hmm and becomes a big supervillain. And sometimes when you do that in a film, it doesn't always work. But in this film, it really does. Yeah. And with everyone super, no one will be. Like, that's some pretty profound shit for a, for a children's film, right? <laughs> Very profound. Uh, the Incredibles, for me, is just good. Like, I don't love it as much as a lot of people do, which, I mean, I know I've only seen it two or three times, but for some reason, it just doesn't hold up for me. I think it's a very, like, three, three and a half out of five star for me. Um, I think the score is good. Syndrome is good. The third act is very good. Um, Everything else is just kind of subpar for me. I don't think it's bad by any means. Um, It's just not on my favorites. All right, yeah. Like, I can see that. Do you you like it more than the second one? Uh, I think the second one I found more entertaining. But I think, like, from a, a critical standpoint, the first one um, is better. All right. Yeah. Yeah, of, cor- of course. I, I love the first one. And the second one, I rem- I'll tell a little story to do with it. Well, it's actually not to do with the film, but it's something that happened before the film. But I watched it in theaters, and I, w- I remember just being so excited because, you know, I really rem- I remembered liking the first one so much. And then I watch it and I really like the second one. And then I probably a lot like Inside Out. I've probably seen it 20 times since and it has lost some steam, but it does have some really good aspects. But I don't think basically nothing in that film is probably better than the first, at least for me. I don't think so, but they're they're both fun. But I still think the first one's quite a bit better. Yeah, just just watch the, the second one again. First thing that I noticed about the second one, at least when I watched it, I was watching it with uh, some of my old buddies. And it's funny because we we go into the theater and there's a bunch of like, you know, kids from three to nine years old. And then the guy's just like, guys, get the hell out of the theater. Like, this is our movie. We've been waiting. We have been waiting for this movie. You guys, you know, so it was kind of like us reclaiming it right in the yeah. theater. Um, and and it, I, when you go into the theater, and you had like Brad Bird and um, Holly Hunter, right? And then Samuel Jackson and some of the other people saying um, like, you know, we've been working so hard in this movie and you know what? Thank you guys so much for waiting this long. You won't regret it. And I'm like, I think that was the first time I ever saw like the filmmakers kind of come on screen before the film and just kind of personally guarantee that you're going to like it. Like that's some pretty, uh, it's a pretty high bar. As soon as you say, don't worry guys, we know <laughs> how long it's been taken. But don't worry, you won't be disappointed. It's going to be worth it. And it's like, wow. And then automatically, and then as soon as you see like the Disney logo in the incredible style, like just like just the amount of excitement. It's like, I've been waiting so long for this. And just just the fact that it wasn't a giant pile of garbage was so <laughs> impressive. 
But now, you know, with the hype dying down, I watched it a couple weeks ago and it, it's it's still such a great movie. I really do think that, you know, Incredibles, Incredibles 2 are like neck and neck. I really do. Yeah. I'd like, like oh, Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> the <laughs> thing you mentioned there about like going into the theater and seeing all the young kids, that's kind of like not as so much. That's how I felt when I saw Frozen 2, because I don't I don't love the first Frozen. It's a good movie. But when I saw the, the second one back in November, I think it was, um, I, we were sitting in front of some like really young kids and they, some of them were like singing Let It Go before. And then all of a sudden, these 12 or 13, I'm not even kidding, like peop, uh, guys that I think probably were about your age or 20, 20 to 25, just walk in. And they were just filing in for like a minute straight and sat down in the front row. And I was just like, wow. Like, it's it's probably not how they felt as like Incredibles 2. But I was just like, that is so funny that you see a film now, Incredibles 2, took 14 years, whereas Frozen took six years. And it's just like, it's weird seeing a Pixar, Pixar sequel at such a different like time in your life. And just to see the audience, is, it's really fun. I was just going to say, I think the short film before Incredibles 2, I think it was Bao or something like that, that blew me away. Like, when yeah. she ate the dumpling son, I my, like, jaw hit the floor. That, <laughs> like, that's my story. That's, that, uh, like, I don't really want to spoil what I think, but yes, that is, I'll talk about that later, but it's because of that. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think it won the Oscar for best uh, short animated film, but yeah. Yeah, we are. I rewatched it um, like a, a few months ago with my friend who I saw the the movie with, like in twenty eighteen, on Disney Plus, and I was just like, "This is so weird. I this is just so weird and different from Pixar, but it's not bad. It's it's I don't I don't really know a word to describe it." Yeah, interesting. I thought it was pretty cute. Yeah. I was like, "Oh." Oh, oh, it's cute. That was basically my reaction through that whole uh, with that through that whole short. Anyways, we've all gone through our number twos, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Who wants to start with number one? Carter, uh, you can. Okay. Oh, so throw him under the bus. One. Just go. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> my number one is Toy Story three. I uh, I know it's like we've already talked about Toy Story two, but I generally consider Toy Story three to be a masterpiece. Like, it's in my top 10 of all time. I think it is just, like, five out of five across all boards, storytelling, direction, animation, um, just such great characters arcs. It takes so many fun liberties. There's so many amazing scenes. Has a great villain, great pr- protagonist, I guess, and just absolutely stunning. It's one of the four movies that I've cried well while watching. And, yeah, it just absolutely guts me. Every single time. Was that at, was it at the ending that you were crying like crazy? Yeah, like uh, the furnace scene. The, yeah, the, speaking about intensity, right? That is yeah. probably the most intense thing Pixar has done. Because like, when I watch that, like, I don't remember the first time I watched it or whatever. But even now when I rewatch it, I'm just like, oh my God. Like, you actually think that these characters are going to die. And you're like, these are your childhood friends. Uh, what these are your childhood like favorite characters and it's funny that like you a lot of people are talking about crying during that movie and that is actually like I tear up watching it but I actually cried at the end of Toy Story 4 now Toy Story 4 is my least favorite of them but it's because this is kind of spoilers for Toy Story 4 so if you haven't seen it skip this but when Woody and Buzz are leaving, like my my mind, like apart, my mind just went to like, oh my god, I've watched these two characters my entire life, and they're just leaving like this, and I just cried. I'm like, this is like amazing. And now Toy Story three, as I said, it, it's my second favorite of the Toy Story films. I had it below the first two, and then the more I thought about it, it moved up because, is it Lotso? That's the bear's name, yeah. right? Yeah. He is probably my favorite toy story villain now i love sid i love emperor zerg but lots of he there's just something about him that stands out and all the the additions of the new characters and how they're at um the day daycare i think it is yeah um yeah. it's just so sunny smart. side yeah sunny side daycare 
And there's just a lot of Prison. smart things that they did and how they threw in, like, a Mission Impossible reference with Woody. And it's just, like, the more I watch that film, the more I love it. And I will agree, it is, like, an A-plus film, I believe. It is top tier, like, top five uh, Pixar for me. It just barely missed this list. I'll ask you guys this question. Have you guys been to a Disney store recently? And have you guys actually seen a Lotso, um, like, actual Lotso stuffy? Yeah. He yeah. does smell like yeah. strawberries. I know, yeah. yeah. It's it's funny. I remember, yeah, we went to down. It's it's now I think called Disney Springs, but like when I used to go, it's called Downtown Disney in Florida. And right. I I remember going to the store. There's like the big stitch above, and yeah, I remember <laughs> looking at lots. So I'm like, hmm, does he smell like strawberries? And yeah, yeah, he totally does. Yeah, I'll, I'll agree with you there that Lotso I think is definitely the best villain because he he just yeah. comes across like. You know, and, and that's another lesson, like, don't always just judge people right away based on, like, first impressions. You know, like, he comes across as, well, hello there. Welcome to Sunnyside, folks. You know, oh, well, Lotso's fine. Lotso's such a great guy. Well, then, of course, you look at his actions and, you know, of course, at the end, spoilers, of course, but we've spoiled a couple of Pixar movies on this thing already. Yeah. So whatever. You know, when, you know, it's like, okay, we save Lotso and then it's his job to push the button. You know what? Still, yeah. screw it. You've saved my life. I don't even care. Yeah. And that's like, yeah. what a dick move. And of course, you know, like when they, uh, the little telephone, it's like, I'm sorry, cowboy, they broke me. And of course, then when he, when they find that out, he just steps on Slinky's toes and it's like, <laughs> you fucking little dick. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, and, but you know what though? His, his motivation and his, the reason why he's doing these things, it's justified. Or at least you're, it's understandable, sure. you know, like he yeah. saw it that way. It's like, she replaced us, right? So it's it's kind of like like someone being just extremely mad at their ex and then just taking that mindset into the world and just painting it, right? And yeah, I think Lotso is definitely the best villain that the Toy Story franchise has ever had, yeah. hands down. I mean, for sure. he smells like strawberries and he wants to kill all these toys. <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah, he's... psychopathic, you know? Yeah. Great. But Toy Story 3. So, okay. So your entire three, from three to one. Yeah. Right, Carter? So you have Toy Story yeah. 3 at number one. And then what was number three and two? Just go all through them again. So Cars, Inside Out, then Toy Story 3. Cars, Inside Out, Toy Story 3. Got it. Well, if you were paying attention, you probably would have realized what my number one would be. And that yeah. is Finding Nemo. Ironically, this is the only Disney movie that I own like in my room on my shelf over there. And I remember seeing this outside um, one, it's not our neighbors, but like on the street, like our street goes like this and that street, um, they had it just outside. It's like a few free movies. And I remember grabbing this. I don't even remember if we owned it or not, but I have loved this film all my life. And then in grade six, playing hockey we had this hockey tournament to drive through and keep in mind i'm a what is that 12 12 year old yeah sure the 11 12 year old boy watching a disney movie on the way to a hockey tournament and i remember watching in the car and then i was just blown away and i'm just like this is my favorite pixar film and ever since then it's just been my favorite I think Dory is one of the funniest characters Disney has ever put out. I love Ellen's performance in there. And as we kind of mentioned before, I know we're kind of repeating a bit, but it really, really tugs at your heartstrings and goes for some deep themes. And I think it succeeds in everything it does. I think this is probably my favorite thing that Disney has done, maybe besides The Lion King, because I really love this film. And it, it just like it, I'm looking at the cover and I see like Squirt and he's just such a cute character. And it's just like, dude, with all the turtles. And it just has so many amazing sequences. And you're never bored. Uh, Willem Dafoe's character in the tank is a standout. And there is some really cool stuff with like the ring of fire in there. And yeah, yeah. I, I just it's, I love this film so much. Yeah, it's so well paced, too. It's like yeah. as soon as you think a scene might be going on too long, it's like, okay, well now, okay, Nemo's gone, Marlin's swimming after, then you hear that piano, doom, 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 Nemo, Nemo, and then boom, introduce Dory. Yep. It's yeah. like you get exactly the right amount of motion that you need, move on to the next, move on to the next, move on to the next. Either you're, Yeah, like you said, you're never bored in it, and yeah, it's it's such a great movie, and I'm surprised that no one has actually said Wally, you're up yet. Yeah, <laughs> those aren't my number one, but I'm surprised that I was thinking before I went on this call. I'm like, okay, I wonder if 
because I haven't seen both of those movies since the theater either. And I know a lot of really? people love those ones. And they're, I'm like, I wonder if they're going to say it. I rewatched Wally a week or two ago. And I really, I'm just going to my Pixar list right now on Letterboxd. And I know Carter has a really fun opinion on Up, but I, yeah. but I love Up a lot. It, Up, Up is my number seven on here. Wally is my number. Oh, wait. Did I read that wrong? That's yeah. one thing I got to get into is Letterboxd. Because yes, I, I have almost all my, every single film I've seen since 2013, like a written review of, but I've just kept it just for myself, just to go back to. But, you know, during quarantine time, I guess I got to, you know, find a process to just transfer all of it over there. And then there'll probably be a lot of grammar yeah. and spelling mistakes, you know. <laughs> Sometimes, then, like, yes. my, my reviews on there are kind of inconsistent because some of them, they're like bigger reviews. Carter writes some like massive reviews, but they're like bigger reviews. And then other times I'll have like three sentences or like a little joke in it. But yeah, I have Up as number seven and Wally as number nine. Like I rewatch Wally. A week or two ago and it was just like amazing and then up i i watched that film at like a weird time in my life like a, a two year or like a year and a half ago and i was just like this film is so sad not only in the first 15 minutes but just overall like it is just so mm -hmm. well made i love it i know carter does definitely not agree with me there i'll, uh, I'll talk about up for our hot takes section of the uh the video but yeah okay <laughs> gotcha so I was going to cheat here because I didn't want my entire list to be just all Toy Story films. But I really, when I look at all the Toy Stories, all four of them, I honestly give all of them a five out of five. And, you know, when people think like, oh, Brandon, what's your favorite film franchise? I never think to say Toy Story 4. I automatically go like Star Wars, Harry Potter, James <laughs> Bond, Indiana Jones. But all those franchises, and I, go, I can go through all of them. There's always the bad one right? The Star Wars, you got the prequels, or depending on who you ask, what the sequels, or then, you know, with Harry Potter, now we got Fantastic Beasts. With Can Indiana Jones, now we got Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Spider-Man, we got Spider-Man 3, right? But Toy Story, you know, we don't have that, the bad one, right? And talk about, you know, Toy Story 4, I think a lot of people still agree that that movie is, you know, pretty solid. Oh, yeah. And I honestly gave five out of five to all the Toy Story franchise. So if I could, you know, if I had to cheat, I would go Finding Nemo, Incredibles, and then all four of them tied for number one. But I'll choose just one per franchise. I'll go with the ter first Toy Story movie. And, you know, I can talk about the characters, the story, the, you know, the animation and the voice acting and all that stuff. But I think, you know, to me, like, that's the film that came out when I was born. Like, the year I was born, 90 1995. And when I rewatched it last year... Um, cause it was a film that I'd, I'd watched quite a few times as a kid, but it never, how do I say this? I watched Monsters Inc. more. I watched Finding Nemo more. I watched The Incredibles more. And then Toy Story was just kind of like that VHS that we had that, you know, I had since I was born. So I guess that was like toddler stuff. And then you, of course, growing older, watching Toy Story 3 and revisiting it. The scene at the end when, you know, Buzz Lightyear and Woody fly. That yeah. is the definition of movie magic, Disney magic. That's what I think filmmaking is all about, right? When you have two characters who have this misunderstanding, right? There's no real villain in the movie. I guess you can talk about Sid, Sid. as like the antagonist in terms of yeah. how the story plays out. But you know what? Like, you know, everyone has known a kid like Sid, right? <laughs> Blowing up all their toys and stuff. And... But, we you know, when these two characters finally come to an understanding and then having that climax and just have everything be resolved in such a climactic, magical way, it totally captures the essence of why I watch movies in the first place. So I can, you know, I can go on about all the different filmmaking aspects and about all the different scenes and how like it works like this. It's like, oh, look, you know, all the, you know, when Buzz is drunk, drinking tea, you know, <laughs> I'm not a real space ranger. I can never do it. That scene sums it all up. For sure. Sums all of it up. Yeah. Like yeah. when I when I watched um, Toy Story at my grandma's house, it's just the the friendship um, that or the not exactly the friendship, but the relationship that spawns between Woody and Buzz, how they're fighting at first, it feels so realistic. Like I know yeah. so many people where you kind of see them fighting. And then they're kind of working together and then they're going through fight. Like, it's just like 
the way that Pixar dealt with this, and this was their first film, I was just like, I don't know how they set the bar so high. As I said, it this is in my top five, six of Pixar's films. It is truly just fantastic. Like for me, I love all the Toy Story films. I give like A plus to the first three and then an A to four. And so I love them all. And this is like, as I said, Toy Story's uh, franchise has been really hard for me to pick my favorite. As I said, it was two, but one just the more I think about it, the more, as you mentioned, those fantastic scenes. What they, what Pixar was able to accomplish with their first film is just fantastic. Totally. Yeah, totally. for sure. Um, I think, like, I like Toy Story. I think, I mean, I know this is a hot take, but uh, it's my least favorite of the franchise. But I think just being the first Pixar film, it's an amazing feat. It's unpretentious. It's creative. It's original. It toys with the idea of what if. Your toys came to life and I think like what if is a big theme across all Pixar movies and um, I mean it is again iconic with the uh, to infinity and beyond the flying scene pizza planet um, it still holds up on rewatches and it's just an enjoyable good film yeah and I, I dare you to listen to you got a friend in me by Randy Newman and not yeah you yeah. know <laughs> and and you know what, I'll, I'll splice this in here. I actually played uh, in a jazz band for six years and we actually even played in the Disney parks and on the Disney cruise lines. And we had this one song called Dis uh, Disney's Pixar Magic. So we played that, you know, the theme from Incredibles, um, Beyond the Sea from Finding Nemo, um, the theme from Up, Ratatouille, all of it, you know, and Pixar, Pixar definitely has that Disney magic. You know, think about those scenes, like the ending of Ratatouille, you know, to infinity and beyond, like, that line just accompanies or yeah. just embodies the magic of Pixar like no other. And, you know, you can totally see why people have just clung to these movies for so long. And now whenever a Pixar movie comes out, I mean, insert onward here, but <laughs> people will automatically just go, we, we got, we have to see it. Right. Yeah. It's a Pixar movie. Yeah. It's, you know, whenever a brand gets to that next point where you don't even need to see a trailer, you don't need to see, you know, like I was talking to one of my buddies, you want to see Onward? What's that? It's the Pixar movie. Down. Done. <laughs> Don't even say no yeah. more. We'll go see it. And unfortunately, that was the last movie we saw before this whole quarantine thing happened. So Yeah. I didn't I didn't get to see that in the theater. I watched it on Disney yeah, Plus no, first, uh, first day. But I actually enjoyed it. Everyone else in my family did not enjoy it. I enjoyed it. What did you play in the jazz band there? <laughs> oh. Because yeah. I have long arms and big lips. So yeah. You like Whiplash then? <laughs> Uh, yeah, that, that's a phenomenal movie, but that scene is fucking tough to watch. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. play, I played trumpet in grade seven, then I went to trombone in grade eight, and then now behind me, I don't want to pick it up, but I have trumpet again, but yeah, trombone, that's fun, and, and I watched Whiplash when I was in grade eight, and I was just like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah guitar is my uh, instrument of choice now but um i still have the trombone uh, i haven't played it in a while but uh yeah it, i still have all my sheet music we played parts of the caribbean we played a lot of other disney things beauty and the beast was one that we played in like a lot of festivals um but yeah so just a little excerpt just saying you know playing pixar and the, the music too like that's mm -hmm. that's one thing for, for me sure. that that makes a, a great movie to an amazing movie if it's got great music yeah you know what else can emotionally manipulate you more than movies i would say music can i agree yeah, so you yeah. Those two together and you got yourself you know you put a great movie with a great score then then it just elevates it to that magic level right yeah it really makes a lot of films like the first 15 minutes or 20 minutes of up would not be complete without the fantastic score the incredibles has this really badass score and then yeah. of course just all of them are amazing. And we actually started playing Pirates of the Caribbean. I know it's your favorite movie, the first one, of course. But uh, we started practicing that in class and this whole coronavirus stuff started. Mm -hmm. But it's just Disney's music is like no other. Like their films are like no other and their music is like no other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's gone, Carter. No, I was just going to say, like, I think um, a lot of like the scores, especially for The Incredibles, I think is just so... Um, just timeless and iconic and uh, even like if they weren't attached to an animated film um, like an action movie for example I think they would totally still have the same impact and still hold up 
Yeah, I agree. Yeah, this this episode is going to be a lot longer. This is already double or almost double the length. But yeah, so if you're listening, it's different also because they are video. We don't normally do video, but it's just easier for me to edit. But do you want to go on to that Cars 3 story that you've been hyping sure. up? Sure, sure. Um, okay, so it's funny. I always say that this is going to be the story I'm going to tell at my best friend's wedding. Uh, <laughs> you know, so basically, and I don't condone ever doing this, by the way. So do as I say, don't do as I do. Um, so 2017, Cars 3, the big new movie in theaters. And of course, I'd seen the first one. I'd enjoyed it. It was just kind of that movie that you saw as a kid and you enjoyed it, but I never really had any you know, big reason to go back to it. Never saw Cars 2. So my buddy calls me up and he's like, yo, Cineplex, I got three joints. We're going to go smoke up and then we're going to go see Cars 3. And I, so I said... Yeah, I'm down. So I went there and we were going to go see, let's just say the movie started at 530, right? And so we get there at around 525 and we're like, we don't really need to see the previews. Sure. So it was legal in Canada. Just saying, I wasn't breaking any laws. (laughs) So we smoked up and yeah, we hit a level that we were not supposed to be in public. (laughs) So we go in and we buy our tickets and we're like, all right, so it's like 5.00. 40 now you know we missed some previews whatever it's no problem so we hand the guy our tickets and he's like okay the door on the right will be cars and so we go on the door on the right and then the movie had already been start had started and it's all black and the theater is full of people and we're you know we're not we're not sober and so we're like shit and then we had to forget we forgot our 3d glasses so we got to like, get up we're like oh god we're making so much fucking noise god damn it where everyone's looking at us jesus christ okay all right Sit down. My friend's almost spilling his popcorn. And we're, and we're like, okay, okay, okay. All right, we're sitting down. Let's watch the movie. We're good. We're good. And then the movie plays for about 20 minutes. And then the final race happens. And I'm thinking to myself, how late were we? Or how strong was that what we smoked? <laughs> right? So it's like, what, what the hell's happening? And then after the final race, it's over. And... I'm like, wait a second. How, like, why is the, we weren't really that late. And then I'm like, oh my God, what theater are we supposed to go in? We're supposed to go in theater 13. We walked into theater 11. They were both playing cars. Our showing started at 5.30. This one started at like 6.30. Or sorry, our showing was at 5.30, but then that one was like an hour before, right? So we went into the earlier movie. So we had only seen like maybe from the set two thirds part, like the last third of the movie. That's all we saw. So we're like, Oh, great. Okay. Well, let's just go into our theater. We missed the beginning. Right. But we only missed about a quarter of our original screening. So we go in there. It's like, okay, great. Well, we missed the first little bit, whatever. We'll just keep watching it. So we sit down in our actual seats and then a giant flashlight comes on behind us. And then I hear some dad going, can you believe those fucking teenagers? They you know they're trying to ruin the movie. They're trying to, they're sneaking in and watching like that's such a fucking disgrace to humanity. I'm going to try to report them. And he walks down. I'm like, oh my God, please just don't, just don't, just don't. I can't handle this right now. I can't handle this right now. <laughs> the manager comes up to us and he's like, all right, guys, can I see your tickets, please? And I'm like, okay, sure. Show them the tickets. I said, we're in the right theater, right? We went into the wrong one. It was Cars uh, 3 was playing the opposite time, you know, just right across from us. So we missed it. And he's like, all right, you guys can stay. Like, the, these, this is your theater. This is your ticket. You paid for them. And so when the guy started to walk away, or the manager started to walk away, the guy behind us was like, are you fucking serious? You're letting them stay in here? Or, or, I'm here with my family trying to have a good time. And I'm like, oh, my God. I'm like, I can't handle this. I can't handle this. And he starts screaming. Everyone's looking at us. And I'm like, oh, God, just just, just don't. And by the time he finally calmed down, the point in the movie, it, it got to the point that we'd already seen. So we just left. <laughs> so to this day, I've never seen Cars 3. <laughs> that is yeah. not what I expected. <laughs> and then, like... oh, man, it was just like a movie. Like my friend, as soon as we walked out, we just kind of stopped and we're like, I can't believe that actually just happened. Oh my god! Like, I haven't. Uh, I really w- like. I wish and am glad also that I haven't had an experience where of people like screaming in the theater. The only thing that's kind of like Not that is when right. I saw Batman versus Superman uh, with my Oma in 2016, obviously. And like these, there's 
like 10 teenagers came in and they were just talking and somebody's just like shut the fuck up and then they took them like five minutes and then they stopped but i was expecting you to be like yeah we came in and then we were like throwing popcorn or something and then they kicked us out but wow <laughs> no I, we would never be disrespectful to people like you know we, we walked in i'm like all right guys shut the hell up like you guys are making so much noise and we forgot our 3d glasses too you know because we were definitely not in the right state of mind um which by the way i don't condone taking drugs but you know if it makes any difference it was legal right so you know we're not smuggling anything but yeah so and then as soon as that was over it's like oh great <laughs> So we didn't even get to see the movie, but you know, we didn't cause any harm to anybody except for that guy's entire day <laughs> and probably his family's sanity. <laughs> but, well, yeah. yeah. Well, my story is nothing like that. And that's, this is by far our best podcast episode just because of that alone. But before Incredibles 2, when we were watching ba Bao, B-A-O or, B or whatever it's called. Oh, the um, short film? Yeah, the short film. Got it. Um, when we were watching it, it was like me and my best friend. We were kind of just sitting there, and we had there were like a bunch of kids around, different people, and then it gets to the point where she eats him. And me and my friend, we were like, how how old were we? we were like not even thirteen. We just laughed so hard, and this is like the hardest I've ever laughed in my life. We were like completely sober, obviously like nothing, and then. We just laughed for like a good three minutes and we were like trying to control ourselves because I don't know what was so funny about it, but there was just, it just caught us so off guard that that scene, we were just like, oh my God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah. Yeah, again, it's nothing to, to your story, story, but I was just like, that was just so shocking to us. And the fact that we laughed uncontrollably for a good three to five minutes until the movie started was just like crazy. I was just like, I just, it, I felt like I wasn't actually there. I was just like, it, I don't know. It was just weird. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty funny, it's uh, it's unexpected. That's, I think that's why it's so funny. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I have no, like, good movie stories at all. I haven't, yeah, so can't really comment on that. But, but do we want to go into the hot takes? Yeah, sure. You can Already. start with your up thing, because I know this is interesting. Uh. So, well, I just consider Up to be the worst Pixar movie, maybe besides Cars 2 and Bugs Life. Who hurt um, you? <laughs> I think the first 15 minutes are like three out of five, but everything after that is just like flat lines, like no action, no gravitas. I think, um, I think Doug's cool. I think the balloons are cool. Um, but yeah, just totally does not do it for me after the first 15 minutes no action no gravitas doug's cool balloons are cool <laughs> three out of five for the first 10 minutes yeah got it got it okay uh, yeah well as i said before i love up for me it's like a plus like i i just i don't know i watched it at a perfect time i love that film so much and i remember reading your review and then I, it was like one and a half stars or something on letterbox and i'm just like yeah what? <laughs> what what because not only are the 15 minutes great it is of course in my opinion but everything since then like it just i don't know there's just something about it that it, it's that pixar magic and the just the rest of the film it's so fun and uh, i love the characters and of course the old man he looks exactly like martin scorsese and it's i don't know that's really weird that's all i can see now when i think <laughs> of up but never even thought about that <laughs> up man yeah, got it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but like, I don't know. I love that film so much. But. It's a film that I really want to like. Like I want to love it as much as everyone else does. But the fact that I gave Cats a better review than I gave <laughs> Up just it says something. <laughs> I'm, wow. I'm, okay, I'm like I'm I'm a, I'm a big musical fan. Uh, you can't see, but back there's like a Phantom of the Opera um, poster. I have a mask, right? there on it and i love i love musicals and one of my unpopular opinions deals with a musical i haven't seen cats yet but i've seen the original print like the not the original production but the recorded stage pr production and even that it's not that good but the fact that that movie that got shit on by everyone it got a higher mm -hmm. review than us yeah, is that i was just like oh my god wow <laughs> yeah interesting so up is worse than cats okay, <laughs> okay. Yeah, I haven't seen Cats. 
I don't want to. <laughs> my my <laughs> movies to watch list is so extensive that okay. really I, I don't find myself watching Cats ever. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like just from what I've seen, just from all the jokes, all the reviews, it just seems like there's so much more I could do with my time. But, you know, maybe it's more enjoyable than revisiting Up. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Seth, Seth Rogen had this like Twitter Twitter that was so funny. thing where he he watched cats while he was high and it was just he's just like what is a jellical and why do they keep saying that and it's just because the uh, the one song is like jellical cats jell and I was just like I mean he's not wrong and then he just started going on a rant about release the butthole cut and I was just like I, oh, I yeah. want to watch cats because I want to see I, I love watching how a, a musical compares like the movie adaptation because some of them are pretty good like right. Sweeney Todd some of them. The music, uh, the movie is pretty bad, like The Phantom of the Opera, which is ironically my favorite musical. But it's just like it's so weird. But with all the stuff about cats, I do want to watch it one day, probably soon. But uh, I don't know. <laughs> what's uh, what's your hot take then? I have I have a few. Um, and this is like the first half of this isn't really a hot take. The second half is I I love the Last Jedi. I know some people hate it, some people don't, but the actual hot take here is that I really enjoyed the rise of Skywalker (laughs) and I know that a lot of people most of the internet hate it so much and I remember watching it knowing that I was just like how how did like like it's just Star Wars I just loved it or I didn't love it I really liked it like it had problems it was though it was still better than the first two prequels I liked it definitely more than so I liked it a lot more than most people and just the quick ones, I, I loved it. Chapter two last year, a lot of that movie got so much hate, and I was just like, I didn't understand why. Which one? Uh, it chapter two. Oh, gotcha, right. right. And um, yeah, hater. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I just have two more. I'll share them quickly. The Lion King. These are for the 20, 2019 movies. The Lion King, I thought, was a better movie than Aladdin. They were both not good movies, but I hated aladdin so much and the lion king just wasn't good for me i don't know if you guys agree or not but like i just thought lion king was a lot better but to talk positively positively about that film besides the visuals well you know yeah right the the remake of the lion king is probably one of the most insulting movies i've ever seen in my entire life (laughs) next to the female remake of ghostbusters it's just like Oh man, I remember watching it and it's like, oh wow, you get to see, you know, Circle of Life, like all these animals look so real. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that it was going to be almost a shot for shot yeah. remake of it with, you know, you know exactly, a- you know exactly what's going to happen next mm. with no magic, with no energy, with no spunk, with no heart, with nothing that makes it worthwhile to leave your house and sit in a theater <laughs> with 300 other strangers for two hours. Yeah, the color Nothing grading is absolutely awful. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, like Aladdin, I don't know. Just, I just, oh God, I hate it so much. Like, there's just the Lion King, I found visually, like, just the, the visual effects are gorgeous, but just watching it, as you said, and I was just like, so they really aren't changing anything because in Aladdin, I think they changed too much. Like, the whole third act of uh, instead of turning into like a snake, all that is just the bird got bigger. I was like, this is terrible. The guy who played Jafar was... Oh, he's terrible. Oh, Awful. my God. He was horrific. Even the guy who played Aladdin, he, I didn't even like oh, him. No charm. Yeah. No it charm. Was just, my I, sister's I, friend has a huge crush on him, and <laughs> I make fun of her for it. I'm just like, oh <laughs> Aladdin's like... Uh. Actually, yeah, I'll let you finish talking about Aladdin, but I do have a question about uh, Aladdin for you guys. Okay, that. yeah. But, like, oh, like Will Smith was... I, he was easily the best aspect of it but like you can't you just look at the original aladdin and how is that gonna go into real life like a genie yeah. Ro- robin williams one of the greatest performances in animation history just amazing there and then i, I remember just sitting down and i was like okay i probably won't like this and i ended up hating it so much right on <laughs> yeah. like will smith was a saving grace for sure when he was yeah. acting like the fresh prince fresh prince of bel air's <laughs> genie that was great because yeah. it was its own thing its own youthful energy to it 
But when you were when he was trying to do Robin Williams, when he was taking the exact same joke, it just felt yeah. like it was completely out of gas. It's like, yeah. okay, well, you're gonna do a retelling of it. Sure, have the same story beats. Yeah, sure diamond in the rough and have princess jasmine you know wanting to do all these things and yada 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 add in some more her like speechless i get it i get it i get it it works yeah but mm -hmm. when you just straight up copy the original it's like it doesn't show any um progress it doesn't show any creativity like why is disney the way it is today it's because disney was was the master of innovation Snow White, great, like first animated movie, Disneyland, this brand new land. And now yeah. what are we doing? We're now just taking the stories that 90s kids would listen, like would watch, you know, my generation. Well, again, I was born in 95, but still like I'm, I'm old enough to remember when Hercules and Mulan were coming out. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it just doesn't bring any of that, that magic to it anyways. Um, but question for you guys. Um, have you guys ever watched a movie and you get immediately like, oh, I don't really want to watch this because someone in that movie reminds you of like an ex or like <laughs> a friend that you'd never really like anymore or, you know, someone like that. Has that um, ever happened? Well, because that's, Prince of, like, that's Princess Jasmine in uh, Aladdin. I got to I got to think of this a bit, but I, I, I if like I've said this a million times in my videos, I hate. Twilight it is my most hated film of all time. Like I, I've seen a part of the second one, but it's because that was like my, at first like first like official like real relationship girlfriend. It was like her favorite movie, and it was like pushed on me to love it. And then anytime someone mentions it, I'm like, you fucking bitch. Mm -hmm. And then, oh my god, it, like even now it just makes me so mad because it was like, oh my god, I love this so much. And then I watch it, I'm like, this movie is actually like it's terrible, but. That's one where I think of, I'm just like, oh, how do people like this movie? And then it makes me think of that. And I'm like, oh, yeah. And I'm trying to think of if there's any characters in a movie. If you right. give me a minute. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and it's... No, like... Go, ahead, Go on. Sorry. Okay. Uh, well, I was going to say... Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's just... It was off-putting right at the beginning. It's not like a gripe on the movie because I you, you can't really be that subjective to it. Well, this movie has someone who looks like my ex girlfriend. I hate it, man. <laughs> you know that's like way too subjective. But you know, it was like a first, like a oh great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, all right. It's Naomi Scott. You know yeah. she's beautiful, <laughs> and she's a great actress. She is by far the best actress in that movie. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, she legitimately is a great actress, and I I do want to see her in more things. And then of course Will Smith brought that energy. But yeah. Jafar, come on! I'm supposed oh to be scared God. of our villains. If I if I feel like I can take them on myself, <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Actually, kind of relating to that question, like a bit of kind of like what I mentioned. My last hot take is that the musical Wicked about like it's like the the prequel to the Wizard of Oz. I think it is the most overrated musical ever. I've seen like the bootleg. It was in good quality. Oh my god, <laughs> it just annoyed me so much. Now, Defying Gravity, that song is a great song. That's basically it. And Adina Menzel is great. But it yeah. <laughs> that makes me think of a different ex-girlfriend who loved it for some reason and sang the song Popular from it, which it is such an annoying song. If you listen, like, you probably don't know, but it is... Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I haven't yeah. I haven't seen anything about Wicked, but I do know that yeah. song. Yeah, it is just yeah. and even just oh my god. But like Define Gravity Great. And they're I don't know if it's gonna be like a movie about it, like a movie adaptation, or if it's the live record like recording out of the performance like they're doing for Hamilton, but I will watch it just because I wanna see if my opinion changes. But I think I don't understand why it's even in the top ten best musicals it is pretty yeah. bad right yeah carter i totally interrupted you no <laughs> that's my, no that's my fault <laughs> yeah no, no worries uh i i don't have like a movie that i relate to next or something but uh just travis scott in general i had an ex <laughs> who was like um he was absolutely obsessed with travis scott so now whenever i listen to like just pretty much any of his discography totally reminds me of that and sort of ruins it so yeah <sighs> Yeah, that that's that's one thing that I've I've learned to do over the last couple of years is kind of like, um, you know, distance certain people with certain things like certain attachments. If you know what I mean, right? Yeah. Like, you know, 
uh, last time I was in a Disney park, you know, my ex-girlfriend lives in Orlando and we did long distance and our last time seeing each other was in Disney World. So now <laughs> it's like, you know, you see the, the Disney uh, castle and you're like, you know what? The Disneyland hasn't changed. Disney World, yeah. hasn't changed. you've had one experience, you know, and that's that's one thing that's definitely kind of helped me, uh, you know, distance the two. It's like, of course, I'll, I'll always be thankful for it, but they are two separate entities. Right. And of course, yeah. it's, it's easier said than done, of course. But that's one thing that I've been definitely getting better at. Um, but the, when you were talking about um, Wicked, I thought of a hot take. I didn't even think about this. And this is one I get in a lot of shit for. It is Disney related. I was thinking about saying that I think Wreck-It Ralph is a bit overrated. Um, but I'm going to say that I really, really don't like. And again, it's all personal preference. Every review ever is personal preference, really. Um, yeah. Yeah. And some are more objective than others. But I really don't like Nightmare Before Christmas. I really don't um, like that movie. I I tried. I honestly tried to watch it for three Halloweens in a row, and I'm like, I I just can't do it. Yeah, I'll, all I see is some great art direction, and some great you know visuals, visually stunning. Mm -hmm. You know, it's very iconic, but it's a lot of noise. <laughs> It's a yeah. lot of noise, so. Yeah, I. Um, that's, just, that's just me, of course. The the thing about Wreck-It Ralph, I love Wreck-It Ralph. It's it's one of my favorite animated movies. But it it like it was, uh, I was seven when it came out, and I just I watched it, and ever since then I've loved it. But your thing on, holy shit, did I just totally forget what we were talking about? <laughs> what what did you say again? Wreck-It Ralph and Nightmare Before Christmas. Nightmare Before Christmas, Jesus. Um. The I, we watched it in class for a Halloween thing in grade eight, and we really only got like half an hour in because it got to the point where no one was paying attention to it, and that's the only time I've seen it. And even then, I was like, "Okay, this is good," but of, of course, me, I was like paying attention to it, and not in shit, but like I was just like, "This is good," but like, does it get better or something? But I haven't seen the whole thing, so I can't really comment on it. But yeah. Uh, just for time, all I'm going to say is I'm not a fan, because just, I, I like it, but it's definitely not my favorite, and... Yeah, Which one, Wreck-It Ralph or Nightmare Before Christmas? Nightmare Before Christmas, and I think right. Wreck-It Ralph is overrated for sure, but uh, I don't think it's bad by any means. I haven't even seen the sequel to Wreck-It Ralph, just because I think that I heard that it got really bad reviews and stuff, I like and that... It, though. Cause I like because I, like, love the first one, but I just, like, I still haven't seen it somehow. But yeah, if if we if you have any last hot takes, unpopular opinions, this episode is going a lot longer than most of them. But that is okay. Can you make it a two parter? Uh, I mean, maybe I don't know. I I might just release it as one, but we'll see in my editing if it gets to the point where I'm just like, okay, I'm done. But right. yeah. yeah, any last hot takes, stuff like that. Um, you know, it's so funny right before I even came on here, I posted on my Instagram story, like, okay, feed me your unpopular opinions. Like I always do that on my Instagram things. And I always say like, all right, guys, we just need to fill this quarantine time with more negativity. Yeah. And I just said, well, the only reason why I say that is because I find that a lot of people, and I think this is a really big telling like temperature gauge of society, or at least of film fans. And I did a whole video about things I hate about film fans. Uh, check it out. Plug. Anyways, um, <laughs> seems so part of that video, I talked about and I said, people are so willing to say that they hate a popular movie as opposed to liking an unpopular movie. You know what I mean? Like people are so just eager to go, well, I'm not like everyone else. You know what I mean? <laughs> like I'm. But then again, like someone will say, like whenever someone asks like for unpopular opinions, the one I'll always say is that I actually really, really, really do enjoy Kingsman, the Golden Circle. Mm. People, so always, do I. people go I, like, I don't, but... oh well, like, like Brandon, so great that you're doing a watch along for Kingsman, but thank fucking Christ that it's not Kingsman, the Golden Circle. Like, <laughs> well, even if it is, you're not obligated to come, <laughs> right? So, even if it is that movie, but honestly, it's like my reasoning is, well, first of all, if you start a movie off with a Prince song, you're golden. <laughs> um, and then, joking aside. It, I find it just captures the same magic as the first. You know, I, I enjoyed the first one more because it had that shock value, right? When you're watching that train scene or that, not train church scene, scene. Uh, church scene, sorry. Uh, I'm thinking about Spider Man too. Uh, that church scene, <laughs> it's like, wow, 
Like this is just mind blowing. I can't believe what I'm seeing. Like this is like, yeah, again, you can't believe what you're seeing. And then of course the second one, you're like, okay, you kind of know what to expect, but it just has that same level of spunk, that same level of energy. And it just like, I'm smiling ear to ear when watching that movie. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. First one is better, but I still really do enjoy Kingsman too. That yeah. is probably my most unpopular opinion in terms of liking a movie that no one else does yeah i don't like i love the first one it is my best friend's favorite movie that first one or at least it it was for a while and i watched the second one with him and i've only seen it once and that was like maybe a year ago and i just didn't really like it for the most part i thought the action was cool the stuff with elton john that, that's pretty funny yeah and the whole country roads thing just turned into this phenomenon in, in the meme culture and I don't know, that's funny. Like, it's not a bad movie, in my opinion, but I give it like a C or a C minus just because I don't know. There's just I haven't really seen it in like soon enough to be like my exact problems are this, this and this. But I, I just really wasn't a fan of it. I'm going to keep it sweet because my phone's at four percent. But <laughs> Julianne Moore is a bad bitch. And I think, yeah, I, I really enjoy the second one. <laughs> Right. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I'll just I'll just finish mine off. Um, I, I I put this on your story like a month or two ago, Brandon, and I remember your reaction to it. I said that <laughs> Mary Poppins is a oh, bit yeah. over. I'm not even gonna let you finish. <laughs> I know it's your show, and I'll respect that. But no, no. I yeah. Go on. I I don't I don't hate it, but I watched it for the first time last summer at a resort. I watched the entire thing. It's, in my opinion, it's a B-plus movie at best. <laughs> and I know I'm saying this, and a lot of people don't agree with me, but I didn't grow up with it. Again, that was my first time seeing it when I was turning 14 later that year, and there was just something about it. I just found a lot of problems with it, and I know, according to you, it's practically perfect in every way, mm -hmm. and a lot of people agree with that, but there was just maybe it wasn't because I grew up with it I, I there's just something about it that i don't find why people call this one of the best things disney has done it's not bad i said i really enjoy it but to call it one of the best things disney has done no <laughs> yeah fair enough carter you gonna back me up on uh, this one i haven't seen the original i've only seen the emily blunt version so i oh, can't comment man. on that but it, um i really hope saving mr banks so. Oh, nice, nice. I think Saving Mr. Banks is amazing also. Like, yes, it, so do I. Honestly... I, I haven't seen it. Oh, honestly, guys, if you decide to go to a Disney park in the future, whether that be Disneyland, Disney World, Paris, Shanghai, wherever it is, if you watch um, Saving Mr. Banks and then you watch Mary Poppins right after that, those two movies as, like a, as one giant complete package, and then, of course, you go to the Disney park because... I think Saving Mr. Banks is the only film shot in Disneyland. I could be wrong on that, but it's know. just, there's, there's such great companion pieces. And I really do think Mary Poppins is like a practically perfect <laughs> movie. I really do. But what's your, what's your opinion on Mary Poppins returns though, Brandon? Oh, so disappointing. Really? So disappointing. See, See, I, I obviously think the original is better, and it's I, I get why it's popular, but I didn't dislike it. And a lot of that, I think, is due Not to the bad. fact that I really enjoy Emily Blunt and Lin-Manuel Miranda is one of my favorite people working today just because of Hamilton, In the Heights, all that stuff. Moana's, the music for it, holy shit, it's dark out already. But it's just there's something about it. It, it wasn't nearly as good as the original and although my grades are kind of close i still think the original is a lot better but i didn't dislike mary poppins returns mm -hmm. no they did not yeah man i just i think like you know the first one in, in mary poppins it, jane and michael are so charming and they're so memorable i can't tell you who the hell the kids are in the new one right I, well yeah i agree on that one like what are their names i have no <laughs> idea and the fact that they need to like tell Michael this like the same thing, like the the lesson learned is almost the exact same lesson, right? Except now that we have uh, like this big giant climax, which you know, when watching it, when just in context, it it's exciting stuff, 
But then again, you're like, why did we need Meryl Streep to sing this upside down? Like, yeah, I, I hated that scene. That scene was bad. Yeah, definitely my well, favorite scene. But then again, you have the guy in the first one who's singing or he's like laughing and he keeps floating. So uh, I, I could be I could be hypocritical on that one. So there, yeah, like I understand why you don't like it as much, but there are like. Again, Mary Poppins Returns, it did go for, like, it copied, basically, Lin-Manuel Miranda plays Bert. It's, he plays his son, basically. Like, he, it's just him, again, just played, I don't know, mm-hmm. by modern people. And then nothing will ever top the chimney sweep sequence in the original, in the Mary Poppins franchise yeah. universe, whatever. But, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Watch Say Mr. Banks. I will. Yeah. Watch Mary Poppins again. I think with those two companion pieces it's it's a great dose of disney it really yeah, is i'll i'll see because like as i said i've only watched it once maybe on rewatch i'll like it more is saving mr banks on disney plus yes yeah. okay then I'll, and then i'll watch it soon yeah so yeah. we are going almost an hour longer than normal but that is okay maybe maybe i'll split it up but probably not just because you know it's fun mm-hmm. but yeah thank you brandon yeah, thank yeah you. no problem. Thanks for having me on, guys. This is the first time I've actually been invited onto like a podcast or onto like another person's video for collaboration. So this was fun. I was like, you know, when you go do these things, you're like, I don't really know what to expect. Are they going to be like, you know, grilling me for every single opinion? It's like, well, I think finding them was great. Well, why? Um, because I like the characters. Well, why? Um, because they're really, really deep. Well, why do you think they're deep? You know, like yeah. Like, I know some people are definitely like that. They love to just grill. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll, yeah. I'll try to, like, you know, try to get people to really defend their opinion just because it's like, you know, I'm not trying to get you to say that you're wrong. Right. But it's like, you know, what? if you love this movie, then, you know, keep like hold your ground. Tell me why you love it. And then there's yeah. nothing I can really say to really take that away from you. Right. They're just opinions. So, you know, of course, we may we may disagree, but. I'm glad that you guys were pretty understanding and, you know, I'm I was glad to hear those different opinions. So thank you guys. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, sorry. My brother just walked in there. You can find us, you can find me, all my stuff's the same at you and reviews on YouTube. If you're listening or watching on there, uh, Twitter, Instagram, letterbox. Uh, yeah. You can find my Instagram and my Twitter at Carter reviews with a Z instead of an S just for some pizzazz. And you can find my letterbox account at Carter Anderson. Well, um, well, I have the YouTube channel, Brando Critic. I have the Instagram page, Brando Critic. If you want to get a hold of me, that's probably the best way to do it. And I do have a letterboxed page at Brando Critic, but I don't actually have anything on it yet. But I do plan on moving over because I have quite a few reviews written, you know, over seven years worth. Uh, I actually had the website, BrandoCritic.com, but, you know, I was just paying for a website that people weren't visiting. Right. So I thought, you know, probably letterbox is probably the better way to go. So there will be a process of me moving everything over. But YouTube and Instagram are the two places that you can find me. Uh, yeah. So on Friday, me and Ewan will be continuing our best of the decade series with our best director top five pick. And uh, yeah, thank you all for listening. And, and if you're on YouTube, thank you all for watching.